Hi, we are busy with the second lecture of chapter one. This is the second part of section 1.2. These are the objectives for uh, section 1.2. It can be found on page 22 of the study guide. In this video, we are focusing on the last three bullet points. That is, drawing a histogram for observations resulting from counting data, measurement data with unequal and equal class widths, describing the shape of a histogram, and differentiating between visual representations for qualitative data, univariate quantitative data, and multivariate quantitative data. Just a quick reminder that we are busy with the descriptive statistics branch and that we are focusing on graphical measures. The first graphical measure that we will consider is histograms. This is just an example of how a histogram looks. So histograms can be constructed for counting data and for measurement data. So, for histograms with counting data, we need to define some terminology. The first is that we need to have the frequency, that is the number of times that a certain value occurs in the data set. The relative frequency is the fraction or the proportion of times that a value occurs. That is basically just dividing the number of times the value occurs by the number of observations in the data set. The frequency distribution is just the tabulation of the frequencies or the relative frequencies. On page 13 of the, of the textbook, we they outline some steps for constructing a histogram when we are working with counting data. So, the first step that you're going to follow is to determine the frequency and the relative frequency for each value in the data set. You will mark these possible values on the horizontal scale. And then you'll draw a rectangular rectangle whose height is the relative frequency or the frequency of that value. Later on in this video, we will do an example of a histogram. Then, histogram for measurement data. So, in this case, the observations are of a measurement variable. You can subdivide these measurement axes into a number of class intervals. So remember that these class intervals can either be of equal width or of unequal width. Now, you, have, you can ask yourself the question, what happens if an observation falls on a class boundary? On page 15 of the textbook, they make a rule saying that if our observation falls on a class boundary, we will include that observation in the clause on to the right of the observation. Okay. Then let us see the steps for constructing a histogram for measurement data when the clause widths are equal. So you will again start off by determining the frequency and the relative frequency for each clause. You will then mark the class boundaries on the horizontal axis and above each class interval you will draw a rectangular rectangle whose height is the corresponding frequency or relative frequency. Then you might ask yourself, in how many clauses are you going to divide your horizontal scale? So on page 16, they define a reasonable rule of thumb, which is the number of classes can be more or less equal to the square root of the number of observations. This is only a rule of thumb 
and some other number of classes may also be sensible. Let us focus on the example of the histogram. So, the question that we are interested in is to construct a relative frequency histogram for the final marks of 40 WSD111 students in 2019. So, we have divided the class intervals into five, five intervals, okay? And we have a frequency for each of these intervals. We will calculate the relative frequency by taking the frequency and divide that with the number of observations. So we have calculated our relative frequency and we have our frequency. So the next step is to draw the horizontal axis. And then we will draw a rectangle with the height equal to the relative frequency because that is what we we'll want to construct a histogram of. And then the width, the width of the clause. So for the clause interval between 0 0.10 0 and 19.5, there's a relative frequency of 0 0.125. So this first rectangle represents that class interval. So it stretches from 0 to 19.5 and the height is zero, more or less 0 0.125. Let us ask ourselves, what will be the sense in having unequal class widths. Let us look at a scenario as in A. In this scenario, we have many equal class widths. So most of them are empty, which will lead to a frequency of zero. In case B, we have less but wider classes. So this means that each class actually does contain an observation, but where the observations are more dense, the bars will just be much higher and we will not be able to represent these values quite nicely in the histogram. So, therefore, as in this line C, we, want, we would rather want for the denser values, narrower class intervals, and for the way the observations are more stretched out, we will want wider class intervals. So, therefore, we want to construct a histogram for measurement data where we have unequal class widths. So for this, the steps to construct such a histogram, that's on page 17 of the textbook, is you should determine the frequencies and the relative frequencies. Then you calculate the height of each rectangle. The height of this rectangle is the frequency of the class divided by the class width. And this rectangle height can also be seen as the density. And then the vertical scale is then the density scale. On page 19, different histogram shapes are defined. So, a is a symmetric shape. So the left hand side is the same as the right hand side. It's also unimodal because it only rises to a single peak and then it declines. 
B is bimodal because it has one, two peaks. If a histogram has more than two peaks, we can call that multimodal. Okay. A histogram that is stretched out on the right is called positively skewed. And a histogram that is stretched out on the left is negatively skewed. On page 19, we also talk about qualitative data. So, a frequency distribution and a histogram can be constructed when the data is qualitative. So it is categorical. In this case, you can also construct a bar graph, which is almost the same as the histogram. Instead, the bars do not touch each other. So there is a little space between each bar. Sometimes there will be natural occurring classes. And other cases, it will be more arbitrary. So example 1.10 is a nice example of a histogram for qualitative.